we were talking about this year's ballot, and Paul said that he thinks that the Young Bucks will get the highest point total of anyone on the ballot, and I thought that they would probably not get in. Wow. So um, it kind of thought, you know what, let's talk about these different people, you know, so that you're kind of, you know, you are the catalyst for this. You know, I mean, as soon as, cool. as, soon as, as, soon as we started talking, I go, hey, we need to do a show on this. Cool. So we are going to focus a lot on the more modern candidates, uh, first time balloters, as well as people who have, you know, not even uh, kind of been on the edges there and some who haven't really come that close. But, you know, maybe with another year under their belt ha have a better chance i'm mostly going to play point guard here i'll have i'll have some comments here and there but i want to make sure that we get everybody's perspective so and this is not like a 2023 nba shoot first point guard i'm going to be like jason kidd like just dishing it out so that everyone gets a chance uh but but dave uh since we let off with the, the conversation about the young bucks uh why don't we start there because uh, they are new to the ballot in uh, 2024 first time 2023 2023 first time on the ballot and uh paul thinks that they're going to do well you think they're not going to make it i kind of wonder how the these this last year plays for them because i i had this thought while watching a lot of the tv heading into forbidden door in that they are a part of the elite, which should, which is a giant part of AEW, but they're kind of in the background in their own group right now. For whatever reason, they're not in the tag team title mix right now. They're not often in, in big matches uh, on Dynamite. And do you think that uh, anything happening with what they've gone through over the last year hurts them? Um, I, you know, it's hard to say because it depends. I think most balloters are going to be people who have made up their minds strongly one way or the other on them. And I mean, it, I think it comes down to a couple of things. Number one, people don't like to vote for people who are still active. It, it, it's very difficult when you're active. I mean, um, you know, oh, if you're Okada, it's not, but, but, you know, Okada is a, you know, a, a rarity. Roman Reigns is an in just as an example of that. Um, so I think that that is tough. On the flip side, you know, the the there would be no AEW. AEW changed the entire business completely. Um, you know, everybody's making more money because of AEW. Um, there's way more wrestling on television. There's way more jobs. And and they were a key to that. And, you know, they were the pre premier tag team in the business for years and years and years, all, you know, in the United States and Japan. And, um, you know, had all the incredible matches and things like that. So there's the it's very it's I, I thought it would be too polarizing for them to get in early but paul you know thought that they were going to be the strongest candidates on this entire ballot so let's go to paul well yeah i just think i mean for one of the things you said in there there'd be no aw if it wasn't for them i think that is a huge feather huge. in your cap absolutely and, yeah. and i think that like in my mind um the all the elite uh including cody and tony khan to me are like no-brainers just for that reason alone then when you add in the match quality and the influence and even the drawing, you know, that the Bucks have done. I mean, they had the biggest gate in Ring of Honor history before Tony Khan bought, bought the thing. Um, they, you know, they, they made a big difference on the indie scene. They've, you know, they've been a big part of AEW's success. And um, yeah, I just, I think, I, I don't like, I think they're weakest probably on the drawing, but everything else to me is so far and above. So I think the only people that aren't going to vote for them, like you said, are the people that, just aren't going to vote for anybody active and the people that just refuse to recognize the success of AEW. And there's, you know, there's, a there's people, there's, people. there's, there's definitely yeah. people on that, you know, who yeah. will go like, it's, you it's know, too early. And, and, and I mean, it is, it, it's four years. It's not yeah. like, you know, at the 10 year mark, I would say that we would could look back, like, like just say Tony Khan, right. Is, is a perfect example. Like when people go, should Tony Khan be in the hall of fame? And I said, at the 10 year mark of AEW is probably the year I'll put him on the ballot. And at that point, I'll bet that it will be, very clear cut yay or nay we won't have to think about it because they'll either they'll be in business and they'll be successful or they won't be in business in which case it's a no um and I, you know so that's kind of like where the aw thing is in the sense of the the formation of aw was was gigantic and changed the industry but we're still four years in and there's a lot of companies that went four years um and i mean you know you can go like look at impact that went over 20 years but was never as big so it's like it's not so much if they last 10 years as much as where they are in 10 years if they are at this level of you know getting a billion dollar tv contract and they're there forever 
you know, whether whatever WWE does doesn't even matter. They've changed the game and they're the second biggest company in the history of pro wrestling companies. So that's, that's, that's that, then, you know, they're it, but you know, it's that thing of, well, it hasn't happened yet. I mean, it's still, the, the jury is still out on the longevity aspect, but not on their careers. I mean, they've been yeah. fantastic wrestlers for, for a long, long time. And, you know, innovative tag team, you know, innovative to the style, you know, I mean, as far as us learning about different things that we're all taught that doesn't work <laughs> and we found out that it does, you know, I mean, I, Jericho and I used to, you know, talk, we talk about that, you know, you learn, you know, I, and, and, you know, there's, and, and there's so many people who after a young bucks match with them, you know, have gone up and gone, Oh man, that's a great match. And they all, and I mean, one team after another would always go, those are the those are the guys you credit for it because they're the ones who you know made us and you know we all know about i mean you can watch there's so many of these teams that um stylistically don't always work as well with other teams yet when you put them in with the young bucks i mean like look at they made private party out to be like the second coming of um you know when they first when they first came in if you remember the first couple of times and 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 the martins you know top brought, flight yeah yeah, yeah, top flight when they first came in, like these guys were going to be whatever, and like those guys could, those guys never did anything close to that with other teams and and other really good teams, and so that's kind of like, you know, one of the things that they don't get the credit for is their ability to have great matches with a variety of styles and with green people and carry them and make them, you know, take their strengths and athletic ability and turn it into a great match um, because they know how to hold that type of match together. Yeah, I would think that they're their candidacy really starts to take form around 2014. It's the ring of honor run. It's getting into new Japan and not to say they were necessarily the difference makers in Japan, but absolutely on the U S side as they were expanding and absolutely. As responsible as anyone for that Madison square garden sellout. Like again, not a hundred percent on that on their shoulders, but a significant percentage, I believe um, there's even to me, um, a smaller thing is the establishment of a pro wrestling tease that has brought in so much revenue. And I'd put the bucks again, like not the sole responsibility on that, but they popularized that service for a lot of people. And that's before we're getting to AEW. So there's those that will dismiss all their pre AEW work, but I don't. And I I'm with you, Dave. I don't think this last year you've made your mind up before all out. If you are voting for the bucks or not, I don't think this last year is going to waver your decision-making. Yeah. You know, another, the, when you talk about the pro wrestling tees, I mean, what they did, whatever it was, was like 2017. I think it was the t-shirt sales. Mm -hmm. I mean, that changed so much about wrestling and was so, you know, I mean, let, let's look a, a tag team that was not even, on what we would call national television. And they were the number one selling, you know, um, t-shirt at, um, what was, you know, uh, hot topic. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, you know, I mean, it's like, that doesn't get you in the hall of fame by itself, but if you throw in everything else, that's really, I mean, a lot of wrestlers, older wrestlers really have brought that up to me. Like that change in the business that you could, you know, sell that many t-shirts. I mean, you could walk on the street and see these t-shirts, of independent wrestlers, which that never happened on a national basis any time in history. And even the story of how they, how this all happened when, um, you know, the people at Hot Topic were, were at WrestleMania, I believe it was the year in Orlando. And they saw the, you know, the Bullet Club and the Young Bucks t-shirts everywhere. And they went to WWE and they, why aren't you sending us these t-shirts? They're the ones we see. And then they found out it wasn't WWE and they contacted them and go, we, we, we need to try this out. And it was only a tryout. You know, it was like, well, you know, they're not on TV. Maybe it's only a small number. You know, the whole thing, it's, yeah, they're really over to a small number. And then they went in there. They gave them, a, like, a tryout. And after that tryout, you know, all of a sudden, it was like they sold so quickly that they became their hottest thing that for, the, for about a four-month period. And granted, it was only a four-month period. And, like, T-shirt, the T-shirt business is a fad business. But it it did, you know, all of those things, you know, that – they all opened the door to AEW. If if not for you know the the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and and you know as much as anyone, I mean like others, you could even argue were more important as a, after AEW started to a degree. But there would be no a Tony Khan wouldn't have had the idea because those were the guys he went to first. You know he went to Punk first, but Punk didn't come. But you know the guys he went to for, first were were Punk and Matt Jackson, I believe. 
and uh, you know, and Jericho was always on the list, of course. But you know, they were the ones who were in. Jericho came in, you know, after. Um, you know, he wasn't there from day one. The, the Young Bucks were there from day one while the whole thing was in the trenches as far as like, are we going to do it? And they're having to, you know, make that decision to go with an unknown guy as opposed to going to WWE or staying with New Japan Ring of Honor. Um, you know, that if they didn't do that, there would be no AEW because he wouldn't have that nucleus of to, to start. Just Playing v- I'm playing DJ tonight. Vinny, what are you wearing? I went with the uh, shirt and vest combo, which was, was, in fact, a thing in the 90s. We got Craig here, who appears to have, uh, he's Craig Corrosion. Yeah. The ultimate warrior. Da, 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 da. I'm wearing an Everclear t-shirt, one of my favorite bands from um, that decade. Granny actually has a special shirt on today, Granny. Granny is in her 90s. Yeah, would you like, kitties. yeah, she's in her 90s. That's how she's celebrating She's the dressed 90s. in the 1890s? I got my kitties on. You got your what? Kitties. Oh, your kitties? Yeah, that's not what you thought you said, Brian. Yeah. Bye. All right. Get out of here, Granny. Gret 5. Happy 90s. I wish you wouldn't do that. What? They remind me all the time. No, we're doing a 90s, like the 1990s. We're doing a 90s party. Oh, okay. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.